Hey guys, welcome back to my house under construction. This is what I've been calling the real rebuild project. I'm in a critical stage right now. I'm in the installation phase. And in fact, my sheetrock comes in two days. We're gonna start hanging the rock on the walls. So this is a perfect time to give you a tour of my insulation, show you which products specifically I used and why I use them there. And in this video, I'm gonna give you seven reasons why I chose Rockwool for the majority of the insulation of my house, minus two minor areas where I did a different type of insulation. Today's video is sponsored by Rockwool. Let's get going. All right guys, so first off, let's talk about the type of insulation that I used. As I mentioned earlier, this is rock wool bats. Now, if you're not familiar with rock wool, rock wool is a mineral wool insulation. If you look at their commercials, they basically said, look, this is made from rocks. And the beauty of rocks is that rock is a very long lasting material. And it also has, because it's made from rock, some natural fire uh, resistance tendencies. So for instance, if you just take a standard uh, household lighter and you were to try and ignite this you're going to notice that it will not burn if you did this to uh, a lot of other materials you will ignite them and this one is not going to burn isn't that cool so fire resistance is a big reason why i like rock wool but one of the things i also like about it is that it's relatively straightforward to install now my house was framed on the exterior on 16 inch on centers which means that these bats right here are a friction fit bat. Now this is unfaced and you, I like unfaced bats because then I can deal with vapor and air separately, but it also means you gotta watch these details. Like this right here, I've got an electrical, or pardon me, I've got a low voltage outlet down here. That's gonna be a cat six wire for ethernet. The insulators did a great job on this by slicing the bat so we'd get full depth insulation in that cavity rather than stuffing it in and having a wire in there. Now, when you're working with it, you don't also need a whole lot of PPE, which is nice. Typically, you're gonna wear long sleeves and gloves. Now, I'm not installing, I'm just messing with it. That's why I just have gloves on. And you're gonna wear a, a dust mask. You don't even need a full respirator, really just a dust mask. In comparison to a lot of products, like you, you think about the guys that are using spray foam in a house, you have a giant rig, you have hoses, you have respirators, you have off-gassing to deal with all those other things with this open the bag in here, pull the bats out, and you're gonna friction fit into each location. Now, one thing I really like about Rockwell too is that they're telling you the actual bat right on there. So this is an R15 bat, and this is an exterior wall. Now, if you pan around here and you look at this one, this has the Rockwell logo on there, but no R value. This is their interior product. This is called Safe and Sound. This is a sound dampening bat. And that's really the second thing besides fire that I really like about rock wool is that it's a very sound dead product. We're gonna do a test a little later in the video. We're gonna show you how much sound control this is gonna to give to your house. But if you just stand here and I'll be quiet for a second, incredibly dead air in this space. I don't know if we can get room tone on the sound, but super, super dead in here. And I actually have some guys working downstairs you can't hear them at all. And often I'll yell upstairs while this rock wool is in place. Hey, what do you want for lunch? Or, hey, come down, I got an appointment here. And you gotta physically walk up the stairs to do it. Now that sound is gonna change a little bit once sheetrock gets in. The sheetrock will bounce that noise a little bit, but this absolutely absorbs it. In fact, I actually built my studio out of this and covered with a, with a fabric so that it would give us that noise abatement. The next thing I really like about this is it's really easy to install yourself if you wanted to do the install yourself. Now there's really just one main piece of equipment. You're gonna have to cut these bats and they recommend using a bread knife. The professional insulators that I used, I used Hill Country uh, Insulation here in Austin, Texas. They did a fantastic job. Their guys have a knife that they actually sharpen every day or probably even more than once a day. It's basically a long bread knife, although a serrated bread knife would be best. And they're so used to working with it, it makes it super easy. They're slicing those bats, they're cutting and fitting. The guys who did the ceiling here had stilts on, and man, they just absolutely installed the ceiling super fast. Once you get good at it, it's, it actually flies on the install. So 
very, very quick on install. The next thing that I really like about Rockwell is that it's vapor open, meaning that there could be some drying that could dry through there. By having these bats in here, I could actually dry through these bats if there was some incidental amount of moisture on the outside of the house. That's a big deal for the northern builders who really want to make sure that there's drying both directions through their insulation. They don't want a vapor barrier in the wrong spot. The next thing that I want to mention about Rockwool that I really like is that it's very remodel friendly. Now a couple years ago I went down to help after Hurricane Harvey down to Houston and one of the houses that I mucked out was a house that had open cell spray foam and that area of sheetrock that got damaged and where those floodwaters were, it was an absolute mess to get not just the sheetrock out, in fact the sheetrock came off fairly easily, but to get all that spray foam out you basically had to dig it all out. And because it was open cell foam it had absorbed all that moisture and it was like a big wet nasty sponge pulling that out. Now on the other hand one of the things I like about rock wool is that it's hydrophobic, meaning if we were to take a water bottle and drip some water down this bat right here, the water would run off like water off a duck's back. It's, it's not going to absorb that water. Okay, now we talked about seven pros. Let's mention three things that could be perceived as a con. The first one that I get all the time it is, is, isn't this itchy? You know, I don't find it any itchier than any other product on the marketplace wear gloves, put long sleeves on, and it's really no big deal. And the other thing I like about it is the fibers on this are very heavy and dense. And so when I'm walking around in a house like this that's been insulated, there's not particles in the air. In fact, if you kind of look at the sun's rays coming through the windows, you don't see particulate matter in the air. And I feel like some of the other, I don't want to say their names, but some of the other insulations that are out there in the marketplace, they do have some of that particulate matter that's as light as air and kind of floats around. So for instance, if I go in a standard attic that's been insulated on the flat with some type of blown in material, I, it's absolutely mandatory for me to put a dust mask on because with my dust allergy, it's almost triggered immediately when I go into that space. On the other hand, I've been in my house here under construction for a solid week and a half with this rock wool in and I've had no problems at all. Now I'm not installing it. Like I said, I should be wearing a dust mask if I'm installing it. But in this case, I've had no issues with my allergy for dust uh, triggering. It's a very heavy particle and so it falls to the floor fast compared to the floating particles. Another downside I had to think about for this house was this won't stick in any locations, which means that this friction fit bat is gonna work great and stay in place, but ultimately it's gonna rely on the sheetrock to keep it in place. On the other hand, in my attic where I used rock wool right in my rafters, I had to do a very good job of pinning it into place. I used some strips of some cloth and I also used some tiger paws, which is basically a metal clamp to hold that in place. But I had to think about how it would hold. Also in the band joist areas of my house, that's the areas where I've got insulation uh, in my floor joist, where my floor joists come out and stop on my walls. That'd be an area that spray foam would work because it's gonna stick in there, but bat insulation needs to be pinned in there. Now that seems like it'd be a downside, but in fact, I think it's actually a benefit to not have it stick because I think I want that remodel friendliness. You know, I'm thinking about this house as one that might get passed down to a future generation. Uh, you know, I might have grandkids that uh, live in this house someday. If they remodel, I'd like for them to be able to take that insulation out do what they need to do, change the wiring, do whatever and put it back. If I would have used spray foam in that place, it would have been locked in place on that band joist. The other downside that I wanna mention is there's no air sealing benefit to this material. So we can't put this into an area that was leaky. Meaning if I had an outlet on this exterior wall and the outlet wasn't sealed, I could get airflow through this insulation. Now that is something you need to keep in mind when you're building the house and in my mind, the biggest thing you need to do is do a good job of all of your air sealing prior to insulation and don't rely on spray foam or other insulations as a crutch to air seal when really insulation should just be holding uh, that heat or that cold back and should not really be necessarily for air purposes. Now I am talking out of both sides of my mouth here though because right below my feet in the ceiling of my garage, which is underneath my decking here, I use closed cell foam up against the bottom here. 
The reason why I did that was I did want a little bit of that extra air sealing benefit between the house and the garage. And I also wanted to make sure that my insulation was gonna stick to the underside of my subfloor. So in the long run, my entire house is about 90 plus percent, 95 percent uh, rock wool. But I've got a little bit of closed cell at my feet here where my garage uh, ceiling uh, has been insulated with three inches of closed cell foam. And there's one other spot in my house, which is my pop-up stairwell, where I only had about four inches of total depth. And I wanted to be able to get as much R value out of those possible. So I insulated that with closed cell. But in the end, I am really, really happy that I did rock wool everywhere. And you're gonna notice that basically every interior wall in my house has rock wool. On these walls, you're gonna see the R value. And on these walls, you're gonna see their logo, meaning that's their safe and sound bats. And that's gonna be the last thing that I wanna mention here today is how to bid this project. If you've got insulation coming up, definitely ask for rock wool, fantastic product. I mentioned all seven of those benefits that I think really set it apart from the competitors but it is more expensive sometimes than standard insulations. So don't just have them substitute. You actually wanna ask for rock wool by name. And lastly, consider insulating all of your interior walls and potentially most of or all of your ceilings where you've got connected spaces. In my bedrooms, in my family room, in the rooms that are separating my bedroom, my master bedroom, let's say, from my living room, all those made perfect sense for me to do the safe and sound bats. And these bats are a little less expensive as safe and sound than they are the true insulation uh, bats on the outside of the house. So for a little bit more incremental money, a ton of benefit on sound. Hey guys, one of the things that I like about rock wool that I'd mentioned is I like that you can actually write on it. Let's say if I was hanging a TV on this wall and I needed to make a measurement, uh, I could actually use a Sharpie on here or Milwaukee markers, which I actually use all the time, and check it out. You can, you can draw on that insulation and it holds, it holds it real well, which means that it also takes paint really well. And this is incredibly useful for a builder. Check this out. This wall right here, actually didn't need to make this mark, but I do need to make this. This wall here is getting um, sheetrock and not quiet rock. So I marked a bunch of my walls, SR or QR, and look, that rock wool shows up perfectly with that orange spray paint and takes it really, really well. And that is a benefit for me as a builder. Good job, rock wool. <laughs> Looks like a butt more than a heart. Not a very good heart drawer, am I? <laughs> Before we close off the video, let me grab my sound meter and I'm actually gonna see if we can test what that sound benefit is. All right guys, little rock wool sound test. Uh, if you just look at my voice when I talk, although I am a loud talker, uh, I'm probably in the 50s or 60s for my, sound, for my voice on this sound meter. And so when I turn the shop back on, let's see what our sound meter reads here. All right, so it's about 75 decibels when we're a foot or two from it. Now let's walk up the stairs, and we're going to go to my daughter's bedroom, which is literally right above that shop vac. If you can look back to see where the shop vac is, we're going to go directly above that room. And remember, we don't have any sheetrock installed. We don't have any uh, interior doors in place. Okay, so I'm still line of sight on the shop vac, but I'm, you know, a solid 15 or more feet away. Let's call it 58 decibels. Now let's go up the stairs and we're gonna hang a right into my daughter's bedroom. Now that's directly below us. Remember there's no doorways in place. I've got the Rockwell safe and sound on my eye joist. I've got some sound bats in her walls. Let's see what the meter says now. Can you hear that? You can't hear anything. Even with my good ears, I can barely pick up that shot running. 
downstairs. The, the sound meter cuts off at 40 decibels. So it's going from 70-ish, 68, 70-ish, to below 40 on the sound meter. 30 decibel drop, no doors installed whatsoever. That is what I was telling you about sound attenuation. Incredible product. All right, guys, that's really it for today's build show. Hopefully you learned something about Rockwool that you haven't before. These guys have been a show sponsor for me for a long time, but one of the things I like about these guys is they've um, allowed me the freedom to use other types of insulation wherever I thought was best in the project. Um, and at this house, I could have used whatever I wanted, wherever I wanted, but I chose Rockwool, as you saw, for about 95% of my house. And I'm so thankful I did. This is a really good product. I'd highly recommend it for your house. For more information from those guys, I'll have a link in the description below. Uh, and if you're not currently a Build Show subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show.